Welcome to Mainland Television Regional News. I'm Graham O'Brien and today's bulletin, public backlash causes council to speak out over closure. Nelson Mayor, no bull in China shop. Tasman Street resident escapes house fire and more. Hamish's cafe on Mapua Wharf seems set to close amongst much controversy. Last week we spoke to owner of the business, Adele Coucher, who had made the decision based on financial considerations. However, since our story aired, council has come under flack from members in the community about the business's demise. So Chrissy Small caught up with Tasman District Councillor Brian Enzor at the wharf this week to get council's side of the story regarding the new development on the wharf and the closure of Hamish's Cafe. Brian Ensor, you know, you're a TDC councillor and you had a lot to do with uh, Mapua, of course, and Mapua Wharf. Now, I believe some in council are a bit concerned about our story on Hamish's uh, putting on putting the TDC in a bad light. Yes, I think it's just really good to be here and to to uh, give the council side of the story. Yep. Now, Brian, OK, we know that Hamish is closing. That's the decision that Adele has made. It's not something that she's actually been told to do. Um, but uh, her reasons for doing it for her are valid. Um, what does council think about that? Yes, I think it's always unfortunate when you get uh, um, someone that's been in business in an area for a long period of time, very popular. Uh, Adele's a lovely person and uh, the community really enjoy coming down here, especially the families and, and the young children. So, yes, I, sp I suppose it's the end of an era, but when one door closes, another opens and uh, someone else will see potential to um, hopefully do, do a similar thing and to be able to provide for the families that come down here. Now, do you think Council offered um, a fair package to Adele to stay on? Look, I think Council's worked with Adele for the last two years um, and, and, and it started when the Council um, bought the Golden, Bay, uh, Golden Bear building, uh, which was in 2013. Um, at that time, the two uh, tenants in that building, um, Adele's, uh, Hamish's and Cool Change, had very um, insecure leases. The council worked hard to, to um, provide a short-term lease uh, for both those businesses, and uh, particularly for Hamish's, um, with the offer then that when we built a new building at the aquarium site, that uh, Hamish's would be able to relocate there. Did she have any input into the design of the new building? The design actually went to the Urban Design Panel, which is a group of architects that come in from all over the place, and um, people have the opportunity to present the design, and that, that group will then look at it and suggest any changes that they may think may work in with that particular environment that the building's going into. Are they the same group that um, had a look at the toilet block uh, down uh, here? No, I don't think that went to the uh, urban design panel. Oh, okay. And that's and that, of course, is a building that's really well known. It's been quite controversial. Some people love it, others hate it. I always look at it as uh, it's got a my my as part of a my my with those little slits in it that someone could be sitting right. in there. <laughs> we've we've got the situation now, and of course, you know, it looks like that it's been a, a very hard place to be standing there trying to negotiate the, the terms of, of tenancy for the new building and I don't believe that's just in the case of Hamish's, you've got other people who are interested in renting parts of that new building? Yes, uh, uh, there are seven uh, businesses going, going into that new building, uh, there are six others on the waiting list, so it, people recognise that it's a really popular area, the potential I think is quite big. Uh, with the uh, advent of the cycleway coming through here, that's only just getting going and I think the numbers that are going to come through this area are going to increase quite dramatically. In fact, last year, I gather from the Cycle Trust that uh, numbers increased 25%. What kind of businesses are we going to see here um, that, that you're looking at putting in this in place of where our aquarium once was? Well, obviously we want to have a variety. Um, you know, we, we want to cater for families as well. It's a, it's, it's a family orientated area. So I think there's a furniture shop, there's a cafe that's going in quite similar. I think we'll offer similar things uh, to the area that uh, Hamish's did in terms of ice creams, uh, that um, side of things. There's a cycle hire place, there's a, another uh, business which is uh, going to have local produce. Uh, one or two others, which I can't quite remember at the moment. Mm. 
But what we want to do is try and get some variety and, and okay. some interesting stuff for people when they come here. Are you going to try and keep the character that exists down here going? Yes, that's, that's the flavour and, uh, and I think that's, that's right through the whole Mapua community. Mm. We don't want to lose that sort of village, slightly laid back sort of feel that um, people really enjoy when they come to Mapua. Not only the wharf area but the rest of Mapua as well. We want to see a pleasant area uh, not an intimidating area from the alcohol side of things. Uh, the people can come down here and enjoy a drink mm. or they can bring their family here and have fish and chips and perhaps an ice cream, sit on the, the wharf, that sort of thing. Now Brian, we look over here at Hamish's and we see a little little cafe full of character. Now when that goes, we're going to look over there and see a bar. Is that something people really want to see on the wharf? Different people have different views and, and the Golden Bear is very popular. A lot of people come to the wharf area to come to the Golden Bear and they provide at certain times of uh, the year and uh, certain days of the week, music, that sort of thing, which I think probably draws a lot of people into the area and everyone and businesses benefit from that. I think that uh, the, the uh, Golden Bear premises will, will be well controlled and the area, the outside seating areas, they'll have a Pacific area and that's where people will be expected to drink. It's been a playground for many children, mine included, over the decades. Is that going to be appropriate beside the Golden Bear bar? Well, I mean that's been going on for quite a number of years now and families still come here and eat their fish and chips, the kids play around the Nio tree. We are looking at enhancing that area and, and increasing the green space there. But don't, don't forget all, uh, also that we've got the uh, waterfront park, which is the area over, over here, where, where the toilet block is that you were talking about. Um, and the community um, have really got into gear uh, in the last sort of six months or so in terms of wanting to provide some more exciting things going on the waterfront park, particularly for families where they can uh, you know, have play areas, they want to put some play areas in there, they want to put a barbecue there so people can come and have picnics. The uh, tender um, is just going through the uh, council's tender committee this week and a decision will be made as to who gets the uh, job of building that will be known at the end of uh, this week. Uh, building is due to start the 1st of August and it's around about a three month build and um, so it should be completed by the end of October. Uh, still one um, premise, uh, one site still to be negotiated and, and um, I, get, I gather that process is going on now. Is that Hamish's? What that, was that Hamish's? Is, that is. And so, so that's quite exciting. I think everyone's um, exciting to, to, to get that deal. OK, I'm just going back to where you were saying there was going to be a cafe going in yeah. there. Is that the one you're talking about? Yes. Oh, I see. So you are keeping that space yes. particularly for yes. a cafe? Well, uh, what we wanted to uh, is uh, have a business in there that was going to cater for the families and, and young children, particularly um, being able to supply ice creams, that sort of thing. What about existing premises that we have here now? I know that we've got... Um, places like the historic um, wharf yeah. museum and the boat club yes. um, are they part of the future vision for this area are they going to stay oh look the boat club is is very much part of this uh, wharf precinct area they have really been the entity that was responsible for initially the wharf being retained they continue to do a lot of maintenance on it so no it's very much part of this area and of course people love it they come and fish off the wharf dive off the wharf and and of course they're the boat it's just moored out and, and you know boats obviously can come in and moor alongside the wharf as well. Brian Ian, so look thanks for your time today. Um, of course we're all sad that Hamish's is going. I guess council are a bit too. Yes we are and uh, you know we just w uh, wish Adele and Bruce all the best for the future. Is there any truth to the fact that um, you know she was looking at an increase in rent in the new premises? Um, yes, I think there was an increase in rent. I, I think you've got to remember that that site was the uh, probably the prime site of the whole development. It is a commercial development for the council, and if it didn't st stack up commercially, we we wouldn't have built it. Also, I think the fact that there are six um, is it, the premises have all been filled, and there are six on the waiting list um, means that you know the rent levels aren't. Um, pricing people out of the market. We hope to bring you a response from Tasman District Council Commercial Manager Jean Cooper who was invited but was unavailable to be at this interview over this topic this week. Also later in the bulletin we'll bring you some comment from some local early birds on the wharf that Chrissy managed to catch up with about the proposed wharf changes. 
Around 8 o'clock this Tuesday morning, Nelson firefighters were called out to a Tasman Street house fire that required 10 firefighters and three trucks to bring it under control. And according to Nelson Senior Fire Officer Craig Davies, the fire was well involved when crews arrived. It seems that the fire started in the bathroom, but it was unclear what started it. The house owner was awoken by a mixture of smoke and flames coming from her wardrobe and had to make a run for it. At the time of going to air, the fire service was still investigating the cause. Following up on our interview, Mainland had last month with Bill Finlater regarding the ratepayer-funded trips to China. I managed to catch up with our incredibly busy Mayor of Nelson, Rachel Reese, to try and find out what the cost benefits to the ratepayer have been and some of the tangible outcomes coming from the past 20 years of relations. Mayor Reese, thanks for taking the time to talk to us today. Um, the trip to China, could you please tell us about some cost benefits to the ratepayers and some tangible outcomes from the last three trips and our 20-year history of our sister city with China? Most of us don't have an experience of going to China. You know, it's, it's actually quite a difficult place to travel to. And, and I have to say, you know, I went with some degree of scepticism. And the focus of the last trips have been both around the cultural exchange, and we've got Guangzhou, our sister city, who are coming to Nelson later this year for the 20th anniversary of that relationship. So it's around that exchange of culture. But it's also around economic development opportunities. And when we go to China, this time we, we travelled um, extensively throughout China. So we um, went into Shanghai, up to Beijing, into, and I've got to think about this now, uh, Yang Tai, um, then to Wuhan, then up to Huangshu, our sister city, and then down to our, um, our new sister city at um, Yang Tai. The Beijing Institutes and the Yang Tai Institute are leading universities in China and actually rate in an international context in terms of what they, what they um, uh, teach. We have exchanges we're visiting there with Nelson Melbourne Institute of Technology and setting up um, student exchanges from those universities and institutions back to, um, to Nelson. And the only way that you can do it is through relationships and building that trust and relationship. I mean from the ratepayers' point of view, it's our council's responsibility to promote business, especially small business, and to pay to basically promote them in other countries. And, and when we speak about wine industry, these are Nelson wineries we're talking about? Um, yes, they are. And so we're running through. And, and look, if they're top of the south, um, you know, because a lot of our businesses don't just operate as, um, you know, in one geographic location. And I take New Zealand King Salmon as an example there, which, you know, the salmon's grown in Marlborough, the salmon's processed and, and exported out of Nelson. You know, it's a Tita Ihu initiative. And, you know, that's how we really do need to operate to have some presence in international markets. So um, I think we need to look at that as, as you know, as a Tita ihu approach and so certainly from an iwi based perspective that's the approach that's used waka too use that approach i think that's relevant to us so if i think about what what is local government's role um, in terms of economic development in china a lot of the work is being done through provincial governments so it's no longer straight into beijing the linkages are through provincial governments and through provincial governments there is a, a, an expectation still that you will be accompanied by your equivalent from New Zealand. And that's essentially what we do, is that we provide that um, relationship with provincial governments that then support the exchange, the economic opportunities through the businesses that they have. Do you have any real, um, you can put your finger on real results from these um, China trips? Graham, I, and we've talked through the opportunity for our wine industries. And I think one of the things that you've got to recognise is that when, you, when we travel to China for these trips, we're not going to represent specific businesses. You know, that's not what we do. We're not contracted to represent individual businesses. We might be looking at industry sectors and we're looking to find opportunities to build those linkages and relationships. So um, Bill Findlater may um, introduce a range of products and say, look, these are the kinds of products that come from our region, these are the businesses that we have. Uh, if I was asked to go and travel to China with um, one of our key businesses because they were there to do a business deal, then I'm not sure how I'd feel about that. Actually, I, I think I would find that quite difficult in a public role. And we've certainly seen um, members of parliament get themselves into a real tangle, haven't we? It's taken going on individual business trips. So, so one of the things, if I look at where the value's been, it has been establishing linkages um, for one of our 
um, um, businesses here that's not mainstream, and this is the difficulty that I can't I can't name the business in the sector because they are in a very competitive environment with other businesses in New Zealand. But as an example, this is a business that has gone from um, having a um, um, you know, a handful of, handful of employees, um, people employed in one or two person businesses across um, Nelson and Tasman, to having a hundred plus workforce. You know, that's established through those linkers that are in China. We've got the nutraceutical businesses that are now selling into China. In Huangshu, we've got a, um, a essentially a New Zealand shop that sells um, pr predominantly produce from Nelson, and they have a real identity with their sister city. So. I think there are the element of building the relationships and the platforms so then you can create the opportunities. And you could say, well, why should we do it? Well, if I look at the profile of, of Nelson um, businesses and who employs people, is it small to medium enterprises? They, they can't fund those initial trips to build the relationships um, you know, as a one-off. They rely on the platform being created. And furthermore, they can't do it without building the provincial government and China relationship with the provincial government and New Zealand relationship. That's the way of doing business for those people. Yeah, sure. I mean, I'd like to see in the future the council step back a little bit and, and for business to take more of an active role in, in funding and promoting it themselves. And I think that's, that'll be what will happen, is that I, th I think what we're going to see is um, Nelson businesses really move to that next step where there are a number of, and they already have, where we have no involvement any longer with those relationships. They've, they've, built, their, um, they've built their supply networks, they go straight in, they do their own trips, um, but we've given them the introductions, you know, we've opened the door for them, and then the opportunity is really there for business to take it up or not take it up. Look, the other side I just want to touch on, because we've talked about the education element of, um, you know, exchanges, and that's really important that you profile your city, um, because safety is really important to, to um, Chinese families. They want to know that their students are coming to somewhere that is safe, that is inclusive, where they're going to feel welcome, and that's part of what I'm able to do for um, Nelson Melbourne Institute of Technology. Uh, but the other area that I want to focus on is um, tourism. And what we will start to see, and we saw it with Chinese New Year um, this last year, the increasing number of Chinese visitors coming into New Zealand I want those visit visitors to have a sense that Nelson is a place that will embrace them and they'll be welcome. They are really good tourists to have. And you know that's part of China Week later this year is saying this is a China-friendly you know, China -friendly, um, city, we're a multicultural environment, we welcome people from around the world and yes, your, your, um, your uh, equivalent of, of a credit card from China will work in the shops in Nelson. You know, it's pretty basic. <laughs> that's great. This week, a delegation from our Chinese sister city will be in Nelson for two days in preparation for the visit of a mayoral delegation from Wang Xi, which has been timed to coincide with China Week in early September. The official visit will be significant with the two mayors undertaking to re-sign the sister city agreement commemorating 20 years of the friendship. A warning for travelling drivers as the cold weather has taken a toll on two trucks on State Highway 6 north of Murchison on Monday afternoon around 3.30pm after black ice was suspected in causing one truck to lose control, resulting in overturning and spilling logs onto the road, and causing another truck to jackknife while trying to avoid the crash site. The driver of the overturned truck was trapped in the cab for nearly an hour before fire crews could cut him free. His injuries have been described as serious, with suspected spinal injuries, but that are not life-threatening. The driver was airlifted to Nelson Hospital by our ever-busy Nelson Mulber Rescue Helicopter Service. Sergeant Rob Crawford of the Tasman District Command Centre said that the road would be closed until emergency service and contractors could clear the carnage and that the road was extremely icy. And finally, following on from today's first story, while at the Mapua Wharf, Chrissy caught up with three locals to find out their views on the closure of Ham Hamish's Cafe and the impending wharf changes. We often buy ice creams for the little grandchildren. So if another business opens that's not Hamish's, will that be OK? Oh yeah, yeah. Yep. You can always buy ice creams. Okay. <laughs> yeah, but you, you, you know, it's, if um, council are looking at putting a new business, something similar in the new building that they're building over where the aquarium was, okay. so that yeah. you're happy with that? Yeah, Mapua seems to be developing, yeah. so with all the extra building going on, yeah. there'll be 
more room for businesses. Right. But it is sad that Hamish is just closing because that was a good little business. Yeah. yeah. It was always seemed to be busy. Oh, very much so in the in the summer period. Yeah. yeah. If another cafe opens, is that going to be enough for the young young ones down here? I mean, we've got we've got the recreational fishing going on here, and yeah, we've got yeah, and we've got you know <laughs> the little ferry to take people across to mm. the the beach over there and and whatnot. But is there enough going to be happening? For business of for businesses like uh, are the businesses going to be focused on the young or are they, do you think it'll get a bit well, more trendy? Where is the money? The money's from the oldies, right? So you'll get the coffees and the and the restaurants and the cafeterias and probably the takeaways and the brewery and the brewery. Oh, definitely the brewery. But you got Sprig and Ferns just opened. Do you think we've got enough pubs though in in this region? <laughs> I mean, we've an, we've closed the one on the corner. Me. More than enough for me. Yeah. Now, shall I ask this young consumer here? Yes. What do you think about closing Hamish's down? Does that make you sad? Mm hmm. Because I like the ice creams. Right. Are they nice in there? Mm hmm. Yeah. Do you like looking at Hamish's? Mm hmm. It's a funky wee cafe, isn't it? Mm hmm. So what would you like to say to council if they let another cafe open? What would you like to see for children down here? The ice cream cafe. It is a bit sad to that, um, that Adele's going from Hamish's there, but quite understandably. Um, I know what it was like when I first came here, first started a business, smokefish business, in 1989. And um, after five years of that, that certainly had changed here. It just keeps changing. Is that because the population is growing here? Population, a lot of it's to do with um, council attitude, I think. Okay. I don't think the council should really be involved in building a new building there. If they've got that much money, they're charging the rate power too much, I'd say. They're not in the, they're not in the business of property management, of building. Okay. They're supposed to be property management. But they do own the land. They do own the land, that's right. They got the land for nothing, let's, let's face it. That came from the uh, Harbour Board, so the same as all this complex here. And it's only local people with initiative that actually have kept the whole thing going, as far as I'm concerned. Right, and of course the Boat Club was part of that. The boat Club has been right here from day one. Um, it was our mission to keep this wharf available for everybody to use um, which seems to be working really well and you know there's lots of people appreciate this wharf. So what's your opinion about um, the Golden Bear expanding into that particular part of of the complex especially when we've got the lovely gardens where lots of kids go and picnic and all that kind of thing do you think that's going to work? Um, don't know. I really don't know. But see, once again, that built that whole building thing was a part of the cock-up from TDC. Uh, property management didn't really know what they were up to, and it's caused a lot of friction. It's caused friction within the community between the Golden Bear and between Hamish's. Um, it's a bit sad, but is it progress? Yeah. Well, look, I, I spoke to Jim many years ago when it was looking like he needed to expand and he took that lease on and did a lot of financial renovation to that building at a great cost under the understanding that he was going to take that part of the building on. So it's kind of, you know, the previous landlord didn't deal with things very well, did he? That's true. Yeah, yeah, that's true. And because of the land, the building being partially on TDC land, um, there's a problem there too, you know. Too many cooks. <laughs> too, too many cooks. <laughs> too many cooks. Yeah. So what would you like to see happen down here at the wharf? What's your vision? I mean, Council have got a vision. They've got this new plan and design there and all kinds of businesses going in there. What do you think the wharf really needs? The wharf's a good spot as it is, as it is. I think it's got to be, you've got to be a little bit careful about commercialism because you could ask just about any of these businesses here now, this time of the year, how are you doing? And they're saying, well, I don't know whether I can pay my rent this week. So, you know, it is only a seasonal town. People have got to stand together. And um, <clears throat> I still don't believe the council should be developing buildings 
they will get a better return if they lease the land out. They've got a guaranteed return. They haven't got a guaranteed return with buildings because somebody goes in there, struggles for six months, goes bust. Then there's a big fight for the council to get money from them. Can't get money out of a blood out of a stone. Yeah. Well, as you say, this is a seasonal area, so I guess you know that's something that uh, Adele had to consider before taking on a mortgage to refit a whole new shop for a higher rent. I guess that's the one. That is that is for sure. That is for sure. And then even if she did go into the new building, apparently she got to fit it out. And then if she fits it out and um, decides to sell it and then the next people she sells it to can't afford to pay the rent, Adele's stuck with the rent. How fair is that? Thanks very much. After the break, we'll bring you the latest weather update and some events and happenings coming up from around the region. Welcome to Smugglers Pub and Cafe, open seven days a week with free parking all day. Our lunch menus have that fat old fashioned flavour where we treat you like treasure with the food you'll savour. We cater for children, grannies and granddads too, with special rates and privileges given to the elderly lunchtime crew. Our staff are friendly and kind and want to see you all come back time after time. Daytime or evening, it doesn't matter. Give us a call on 546 4084 and we'll be happy to spoil ya. I'm Francis from Nelson Auto Glass. We repair all auto glass, stone chips, windscreen replacements, scratch removal. If you have an auto glass issue, our team will sort it. Nelson Auto Glass Specialist, 84 Vanguard Street, Nelson. Hi everyone, I'm Malcolm Harris from The Facilitators. We now look after sales for mainland TV, radio, sky and online. New Zealand On Air's latest Colmar Brunton survey confirms mainland's large multimedia audience. If you're in business or want to put a message out to everyone in the Nelson, Tasman region, plus nationwide on Sky or worldwide online, please give me a call or see our website at www.mainlandtv.nz. We're the team at JCAR, right here in Nelson, 120 Hardy Street. Our shop is full of electronic items, including security alarm systems, electronic components, solar and power. Electronics toys. Sound systems, cables, and much, much more. JK. 120 Hardy Street, Nelson. World War I was a defining period in our history, impacting greatly on the lives of people from the Nelson province. Memories of the First World War is an exhibition which will be displayed in a number of regional venues and is currently on at the Nelson Provincial Museum. Nelson Diabetes Club will be meeting this month on Friday the 31st of July at 1.30pm at Nick Smith's Rooms on Waimea Road. The speaker is Linda Bergman of Power Talk International, Gold Coin Donation. On behalf of the team here at Mainland Television News, thank you for joining us and we'll bring you the latest news and events from around the region again tomorrow. Supporting local content so you can see more of New Zealand on air.